Good afternoon, Pleasant View Baptist Church friends and family. Glad you guys could tune back in this evening. Uh, I say evening, it's really afternoon because we're recording this. What is it? Almost 3 o'clock? Rose time, 3.50. <laughs> Sorry. 2.50. 2 right. Rose time, 2.50 p.m. So obviously this is not a Facebook Live. I'm going to record this, post a link to YouTube. That's how you're watching this evening. I appreciate you guys tuning in. This is part two of the sermon. But before we get that, we're going to sing a song in a moment. Okay. We're going to sing Refiner's Fire. Remind you, if I don't mention it again, tune in this Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Matthew chapter number 9. Gospel of Matthew chapter number 9. Uh, be in prayer for those folks we mentioned this morning in church. Had a few requests today. Prayer mentioned for the Parker family. Uh, prayer mentioned for John and Kim Pinley. They're in the hospital with a virus, understand. Also pray for uh, Sarah Wicks in the hospital as well. And just found out this morning that Lois Clayton uh, had a stroke. I know. Did I know that? No. So uh, let us know how you're doing, Miss Lois, if you can. Message me on Facebook. I'm going to reach out to you again this afternoon. I hope things are going well for you in spite of the recent stroke. Keep our church member, members in prayer. Some folks still not back to church yet. Understandably so. Yes. Uh, with older congregations, some of those folks are still out, which is good. Um, and pray for those folks upcoming this week, be traveling on the roads. I think David and uh, Hannah will be going out of town to an archery tournament. I think Miss Clayton said that she's going to be going to uh, North, North Carolina. Carolina, South Carolina, North, North Carolina, or South Carolina. One of the Carolinas. Yep. Uh, so this is a good time of the year for folks to be out on the road and the lakes and things. So keep those folks in prayer. Let's open up with prayer. Then we'll sing Refiner's Fire. And then, of course, we're going to go into uh, the sermon this evening. And then we'll close out with prayer. That's the plan. Okay. Let us pray. Our Father, we enter this moment of worship we ask that you be with us in a very special way be with those that have uh, been suffering with their virus we ask that you be with those who are sick and shut in as well Father, be with our church family uh, those who are unable to get out these days we pray that you meet their needs father also those who've lost loved ones in the past week or two we pray you be with them in a very special way we ask prayer for miss lois clayton ask you to recover allow her to recover to full strength and health after the stroke uh, and Father, as we move now into the worship hour, we ask that you be with us. It's everything that we do be to bring you honor and glory. For it's in Christ that we pray. Amen. Amen. Refiner's Fire. <laughs>
turn it over to you. I missed a line there. That's what I get for not practicing. Yeah, I didn't put your lyrics on the screen. Oh, that's great because I missed a line. <laughs> and I was like, oh no, it wouldn't be so bad except they're going to all see it. So that worked out. Yeah, so y'all right. won't know, won't know a line I missed. Absolutely. Well, you did a good job singing it. I apologize. Well, I got busy doing things back here. We got, we kind of winged it. So I didn't practice it. We were just like, let's jump in here and do this. And so mm, practice does help. Try it again. But well, anyways, anyways, we got it through. And so at least I'm not going to say which line I missed. I'm going to let you guys try to guess. All right. That works for me. Okay. Thank you, Miss Michelle. Appreciate that. If your Bibles are at hand, I ask you to turn to Jeremiah 18. Again, this is part two of the sermon of this morning, more of a sequel to this morning's sermon. I'll be finishing, finishing the last two verses, 11 and 12, from Jeremiah 18. Uh, the title of the sermon, again, is The Potter's Will. And let us pray. Father, we come before you this time asking that you be with us in a special way. That we rightly handle your word. And Father, everything we do be done to bring you glory. In Christ's name, amen. The potter's will. I'll start off with a story here. Ed was a sheep rancher in Idaho. And one day a stranger asked him, he said, If I can guess how many sheep you have, can I have one? Thinking this was an impossible task, Ed said, sure, if you can guess the number of sheep that I have, exact number that I have, you can have one. The man said, you have 1,795 sheep. That's right. How'd you figure it out? Well, the man picked up one of uh, Ed's sheep, put it under his arm and said, that's a trade secret I can't tell you. And Ed said, well, if I can guess your occupation, can I have my sheep, can I have my animal back? The man said, well, sure. If, if you can guess the occupation, you can have your animal back. Ed said, you're a government bureaucrat. He said, how'd you figure that out? He said, well, first, put down my dog and I'll tell you. That was the joke. With a string, <laughs> thank you. The stranger knew numbers but did not know sheep. And the Israelites in Jeremiah's day knew about God's mercy and about his long suffering and about his kindness, but to this point they had never experienced his wrath. Jeremiah, he was a prophet because it was his mission to tell Israel to repent. He was the weeping prophet because they did not repent. In 586 BC, the Babylonians destroyed Jerusalem. They carried the Jews off to concentration camps. They raped the women made orphans of their children, destroyed their temples, and burned their homes. The question is, why did this happen? Were they simply victims of Satan's power? Well, no. Did God not know this was going to happen? No. Could God not prevent this from happening? Well, no. In the midst of their pain, God, did he turn a deaf ear to their cries? Again, no. In a mysterious and unexplainable plan, God is able to use the wickedness of sinful men to carry out his will. Jeremiah told the nation to repent. They refused to listen. And then God sent the Babylonians to crush them. If you remember from last time, or at least this morning, just an hour, a few hours ago, I'm going to bring up the points, the concepts from that sermon this morning. First was this, the, the condition of the clay was marred, spoiled, or ruined. I spent some time illustrating this point. Uh, it's the doctrine of original sin. It's the concept that we're conceived and born into sin. That because of Adam's sin, we are born fallen, corrupted, infected. The whole human race, in fact, is. And condemnation rests over all of the seeds of Adam. The clay from which Adam springs, the clay which we spring from Adam, rather, has been corrupted, spoiled, or marred. And second, the second point from this morning is this. The Lord is a potter, or he's a maker. It is God who shapes the clay. We are the clay. The same clay which is, all the clay is ruined, and God takes some and fashions it to a useful vessel, and some he prepares for wrath. Number three this morning, we also saw conditional consequences. That God did demand Israel to repent. And their refusal resulted in their destruction. So without delay, Jeremiah 18, 11. Now therefore, say the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I am shaping disaster against you and devising a plan against you. 
Return everyone from his evil way and amend your ways and deeds. So the question has to be asked at this point, if God was already preparing a disaster and planning to destroy them, why was he offering them the option of repenting? Was his offer insincere? No. God truly wanted them to repent. The Bible says that God is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the context of this verse is in the us. God does not want his children to perish. He wants them to repent. In Jeremiah's day, God knew that his people would not repent, so he had prepared in advance the destruction even beforehand. God is all-knowing. But why did God encourage the Israelites to repent while planning their destruction? Well, it is no accident that Babylon was becoming a world power at the time, becoming an empire, the first perhaps in history. And God began raising them up even 500 years earlier, before even this moment of time. He had planned to use a pagan army to destroy Israel. God in his sovereignty can do that. He makes nations rise, and as he said in the text earlier, he makes nations fall. We were talking years ago to a pastor friend of mine who was sure that AIDS, this is in, when it first came in the 80s, he was sure that AIDS was a plague on the homosexual community in our country. And it's true at that time, that particular uh, population of people had a much higher rate of AIDS infection. And I said, if it's a plague on that community, then why are so many others affected? I asked that preacher about cancer. Who was that supposed to kill? And airplane crashes. Who was that supposed to get? And terrorist bombings and pneumonia and heart disease. You see, if God is sovereign over AIDS, then he's sovereign over all forms of death. You see, God di didn't see the distinction between the glutton and the prostitute. In the scheme of things, all sin is equally damning. Jeremiah eighteen twelve. But they say that this is in vain. We will follow our own plans, and everyone will act according to the stubbornness of his evil heart. If you listen to the first part of this, if you're available to tune in this morning, remember the analogy that I used about a doctor telling his patient to reform his diet, to change his ways, to stop the fatty foods, to stop the, the salt because a heart attack was pending? That he gave the good advice to to, for the man to save his own life through uh, diet changes. That's a good analogy to a degree. Jeremiah does the same thing. Repent, turn from that, and spare your life. Israel had a heart disease. They were idolaters and pagans. They were sacrificing their children to pagan gods. And God was preparing a national heart attack for Israel. The heart attack was the Babylonians. The heart attack was inevitable, and it was going to be fatal. And God prepared this judgment because their heart was far from him. Do we think that he will do less for us? He offers us the same opportunity to repent as did Israel. And the question we ask is this, what is your response to the call of God to repent and turn from sin? Will you remain hard-hearted and stubborn? Or you come today? Will you come and bow a knee and heart to him? Will you turn from sin? Meet Christ on his own terms? Or will you walk away unrepentant, stubborn? The question is yours. Jeremiah the prophet gave the call to the people of his day. Turn from sins. Come to Christ who offers mercy and salvation. That's the heart cry of the prophets. Let us pray. Our fathers, we bow before you this time. We are thankful for the gift of your son who came and gave himself for us. The gift of salvation offered full and free. We thank you for men like Jeremiah who even stand now on the wall, the watchmen on the wall, calling others to repent. Father, we ask that you would be with us in a special way. Be with those in the sound of my voice. Move them today into salvation. Father, we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Well, tune in this Wednesday. Good timing. Tune in this Wednesday.
6 p.m. Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 9. Look forward to seeing you guys. Have a great week. God bless you. And the rain's lifted. The clouds are parting. Beautiful afternoon. Enjoy this afternoon what's left of it. See you guys Wednesday night. Take care.